All right. Well, 90 for 9, Bay's number one hit music station. Have a very special guest today, singer-songwriter, the Bay's own Francisco Martin. How you doing? Hi. Doing oh, good? Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm doing really well. So you were born and raised in San Francisco? Yes. Yeah? And you still live here? Uh, No, I, I currently live in Los Angeles now. Oh, um, I was going to say, have you hit up any I, Giants games? Oh, my God. I'm so sad the I Giants know. lost. I, I was there. Uh, so I, I've been a, I've never been in, like an avid sports watcher. Uh-huh. And then like this, this season, I watched ball I, w- I went to a Giants game and sang the national anthem and I was like hooked ever since really yeah, oh my god that's super Dodgers, dope yeah and I knew that I know this is like this is this is like this rival rivalry right that's like so then, like I like definitely rooting for the Giants you know from right San Francisco and like I followed them the whole entire season and like I would watch their games in LA <laughs> on TV even wanting to go to their fu- I'm sorry no you can't I can't cuss go go crazy okay. it's okay <laughs> I, I even wanted to go to their game and like in LA and like they lost the series, and like I was, uh, it was I was in rehearsals from rehearsing for the tour, uh-huh. and like I had the most like depressing ass mood the whole entire day. I swear, like, so you got like attached. Yeah. You're like and everybody uh. else was like everybody else was like I don't know why you're so like hooked on this. Like bro, it's just like a different kind of heartbreak. Sports heartbreak is like so different from like actual heartbreak. That torture. Yeah. The Giants are like yeah. known for that. I'm, I mean, I'm an A's fan, but even I got like a yeah. little like invested in it. I'm like, oh yeah. man, I kind of want to see them win. They, they, had, like, <laughs> they had such a good season. Right. Good season, like it's. I mean, they'll they'll catch him next season. But um, I'm very happy for the Dodgers. Although I'm not a Dodger. I know because you're like surrounded by all the fans, right? Now, right I'm over like, there. I'm like, I live in LA now. <laughs> Should I just conform to being a Dodgers fan? But like, no, nah, yeah. I can't do that. I can't do that. It's like such a big oh, switch, especially because they're the rivalry. Yeah. Let me tell you the story. I yeah. literally I was at a Dodgers game uh-huh. with my friends and like hated being there. So then I was wearing <laughs> and I was like pretentiously wearing a Dodgers hat. And like knowing that I wasn't a Dodgers fan, that's a good. You're a good sport for that. Yeah, and then like uh, I got something like like pissed me off during during the during the mat of the, the game, <laughs> uh-huh. and I threw my do- my my friend. I was like, I don't want this Dodgers hat. I threw it in the trash can. Stop. And then, and then my friend picked it up in the trash can, and I was like, I don't want it, bro. I don't want it. And then like he was like, All right, I'm gonna throw it over the stands, and he threw it over the stands, and then some girl like caught it. Oh and, my like, god. She turned around like, who the hell threw that? <laughs> and then like I was like, it's a free Dodgers hat, bro. Right, like, you should no, be happy. No hate, no he came up. The Dodgers. I just love the Giants, and I'm like super sad they didn't make it this season, but it's fine. And um, yeah, we'll get them next time. You uh, should redo that. Throw in the hat in the trash can. People will love you for that. Right? <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, I gotta be. I gotta. I gotta stay. Uh, I gotta stay uh, close to to home. You know. You gotta do it. And I mean, you definitely had the whole Bay Area rooting for you last year when right. you were on American Idol. I mean, yeah. you were top five. Mm-hmm. How was that whole experience? I mean, that's such an iconic show. It's a. It's a very iconic show, and I. I'm so happy. It's it's almost weird to even think that I was on Idol because it was not so long ago, but it right. felt really long. And um, just being on the show was just this like very long process and very stressful. I mean, I I think I like people say it's so stressful, but I think I was like ignoring all the stress and yeah. just, like, going with the flow, which kind of worked in my favor a little bit because uh, while I was on the show, like going through the rounds and stuff, like it didn't feel as like intimidating as it seems right because i kind of went in with the in, with the mentality that like oh i'm just here to sing and like do me and not compare myself to other people and like right. kind of go and just do it can and it get like, like really go. competitive and like on the outside is like is there a oh, like, team like how the i, I just, feel like i feel like i got the only time i saw like competition was with like the diva singers when they were like kind of just like trying to out out sing i'll each sing other. each other yeah and everybody else was just really chill because like mo- the the good thing about this season the season i was on there was a lot of artists and singer songwriters right that, like everybody was just so down to share their music and like we had like little writing circles and like oh that's so things. dope i'm sure it's yeah. like great networking experience yeah, too right great. and like a lot of them all of them became like my best friends in la so like we're we just kind of like make music together now like uh oh, I and you guys all really, still talk to each other and yeah, everything i'm like best my one of my best friends forever is louis and um julia and like Wyatt, Wyatt Pike from, from the previous season mm-hmm. that just happened. Uh, we're all really good friends, and I'm so grateful that I found like my tribe in LA. That's super dope. How yeah. was it like being in front of freaking Kay- Katy Perry and oh, Lionel right. Richie? Like- Katy Perry has like, the, the most beautiful eyes. Like, that. yeah, <laughs> were you just like distracted striking, by her beauty? Striking, You're like- <laughs> but beautiful. And like, yeah. I always felt like really. In- that's the only thing. I know I said I wasn't intimidated, but I was intimidated by her eyes because they were just so striking, <laughs> and they were like this. I think they're blue. I don't know. I might be wrong. Yeah, they're blue. Right. Just, like, striking Maybe like blue hazel. Blue hazel. Yeah. Me. And like, I don't know. She's part of the reason why. Like, it was just really hard to like not look at her and not be nervous. Right. Yeah, I'd be freaking out. I'd yeah. be like, oh my god. I wasn't starstruck per se. <laughs> I like because I love Katy Perry. And I grew up on Katy Perry's music and stuff. And, like, right. Grew up in Lionel Richie's music, obviously, because my parents and stuff. And he's a legend. Right. And like seeing all those three judges like 
at first like you know up in person like really close like really made me nervous and like i couldn't control my nerves so i just yeah. basically like went with it and i was and, and like kind of accepted my fate of like all right if i don't go get through and is this gonna be this really bad audition of this kid yeah like, sweating his balls off you're like i gotta get it together you're exactly. like yeah, yeah. <laughs> if i'm gonna keep doing yeah, this luckily though when i started when i sang that, that i'm talking about the organ audition when i sang and like opened up my mouth like my, my my vocals saved me. Riles, they were thing. like blown away because I remember they were like checking your pulse and everything. I was like, yeah. oh my god, do they have to do all Which that? Like they're making me nervous. It made it worse. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. like them coming up to me and touching me like made it worse. Literally watching it, I was like, this is giving me anxiety. I was like, yeah. bro, yeah, <laughs> they're yeah. doing so much. Enough. And they came in, and I was like already, and I came. Like they came up to me, and I was way more. Because you almost didn't even know what they're gonna do. I was like, oh my god, why are they walking yeah. up to him like that? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why are y'all so tall? Right. Oh, yeah. I did watch uh, that first audition. I love that you chose Maggie Rogers. I'm yeah. obsessed with her. I like love Maggie Rogers Alaska, so especially much. her in yeah. a past life. So good. Have you ever met her? Like I haven't met her, but we talked a little bit in the DMs uh, a while back while I was on Idol and yes. sang her song. A uh, shout out to me, you, Maggie. You should follow me on Instagram if you haven't yet. Yeah. Um, I'm kidding. <laughs> love that. Kidding. Okay. I love You're her. like She's, we're besties. Her basically. music literally changed my my whole perspective of music and like my own music and writing like she's the reason why i started songwriting really um, yeah. i was going through a really dark phase in 2019 before idol and all that stuff mm -hmm. and, like when i found her in a coachella set list i looked up her name and heard alaska for the first time the first song i heard and i was like oh my god this is a breath of fresh air it, she's so dope and you know i feel yeah. like she has such a young audience i went to two of her shows and i was like freaked out because you went to her shows no oh one is gosh. on their phone like i know they call her the dancing queen but like yeah. everyone's just dancing oh, yeah she cool. starts off like when you're waiting she plays um dancing queen and then oh, she always nice. ends it with whitney houston i want to dance with somebody and like n literally no one is on their phone everyone's just like singing at the top of their lungs like oh, i've cool. never seen anything like that with like such a young artist you know I what i mean that. yeah yeah and, and then she just sounds that's amazing that's so nice. right when I heard you sing that, I was like, "Oh, this I is the guy." I got a dancing queen for my tour now. <laughs> hey, you can be the dancing king. You guys dancing can have like king. a whole dance yeah. duo. Dancing prince. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the nerves. I know. Yeah, you talked about it before, and on the show, having an anxiety. How yeah. has being on American Idol like helped with that, or like changed it? Do you, is that something you still deal with? It fluctuates. Like my my anxiety definitely like was like I was really anxious coming on the show, obviously, and then like during the show, I was very like in tune with how I wanted to perceive myself or be perceived as on television and stuff. So I try to work on myself um, on trying to be more confident on stage and in turn, like meeting new people, different walks of life and like uh, talking with the judges and all that, like really helped my mental health. Right. Out and like kind of like made me feel like I belong there and in turn made me want to be a part of such a bigger thing. And um, after the show post idol, like it was like, really crazy. Like I went from a really confident kid to like kind of going back into the, Oh really? COVID and all that. And I know, right? The solitude I was in. It was a bunch of lonely, lonely days, and like moving to LA for the first time during COVID. It was a ghost town, and like you were kind of like, like starting back to one of like yeah, figuring yourself out and all that. Like, yeah, oh, wait, I'm actually like I was like I'm I'm kind of like figuratively. I was on this mountain, and like I just fell off the mountain. I have to climb back, climb back up. Yeah, and like it was just this really bad, like time in my life. But I'm like through different types of like care, like therapy and like medication like definitely like stabilize the balances of my brain but um yeah i'm like way better now and i'm very grateful that i was on the show because without it i probably would not be here so right yeah. i mean you even saw it improve throughout the show i remember katie perry was like i don't even recognize you anymore and she's like but that's a good thing that's a good, <laughs> you're like, yeah, yeah. I was like is that a good thing it better be a good thing i love yeah. how they they're always comparing you to bruno do you love that or is it like are you I like because we're filipino I like up, you know I grew up, I, yeah i grew yeah. up, I grew up <laughs> listening to bruno mars i used to drum locked out of heaven like saying like wait what is it what is it when it was like your sex takes me to paradise or something like that when i was like 10 years old oh my and you're like, like i should not be singing this yeah. like, Do I, does my dad even care right singing this right now Riddle's the man he has yeah. so much like i mean so if you dope. could perform with beyonce and like not be overshadowed or yes. anything like i think that's like set in stone virtuous, yeah. so wait you you actually were drumming before you started singing right yeah i that that was my main instrument um still is and um my dad's the one who like kind of bought me a costco drum set one night when i was when he had like weekend bands and like i was banging on the walls and he got me this cheap drum set and then i played and i got lessons and all that and he was like oh, you wow. sing? and i was like yeah and he was like how about you sing and play drums and then like kind of just went from there i was like nine ten years old and then i kind of never stopped oh my god you're like the filipino selena Cantania. that's like oh, her exact story really? does she sing and play drums too well like her dad was your dad in a band yeah so his dad oh, was yes, in a band yes, yeah. and they he like forced the kids to like become a band and sing right, and right. like we well, had the sister on the dress that's not her of, but still yeah, he was like you're gonna how sing it is, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, that's basically what happened because my 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 brother played the bass 
and my dad Slayer. Me oh my gosh was like the backup singer lead singer my dad was a guitarist and i was a drummer singer so it was like it was a whole family band that's so all dope the actual bands and like gigging every weekend with different session musicians in the bay area oh my gosh that's yeah. so cool i was also watching your uh you just dropped the lyric video for if you need me yeah that's such a beautiful song what was the inspiration behind that thank you by the way that was pretty nice mm -hmm. uh um the the inspiration by, behind if you need me is like i was just sitting like i, w I was really kind of like sad over this little thing i was going through um i kind of left on bad terms with this one person mm. and then like sat on my couch and like kind of was just thinking in my head and i, I know i didn't i wanted to write a song and i didn't want to write something super sad and like kind of just like super just depressing yeah. and like i I'm heard gonna Johnny, write you a love song yeah, you're like <laughs> you. yeah, exactly. like it's um, not gonna be sad yeah <laughs> so um john mayer who's one of my, my biggest idols yeah uh, told me I mean, not told me. He never. He never talked. He never. Yeah. To me. That never happened. <laughs> he messaged me. Yeah. In my in my in my head, he talked to me. Right. Um, but he <laughs> said in an interview once that like I had this song in my head before it was even written, and I was like, I thought that was the most pretentious thing that someone mm. said, a musician said. And then um, you're like, I felt that. Yeah. You're yeah, like, then you I, got like, it. Yeah. I thought about it in my head, and I was like, oh, this like, is what he was if talking you need about. me, I'll be around. And then like had the whole structure in my head, and then wrote it right after that. And it took a couple months to like get it finished because I was in Nashville, in and out, and like I finished it in Nashville. And um, produced it in my Airbnb in Nashville and became the record. Oh and, man! Yeah, so it's, about, it's about it's basically about um, like like being the bigger person, being the bigger man, and just like being around. Um, yeah. Whenever you need, um, whenever that person needs you, and to me, it's a universal meaning now. When I listen to it, I think about my mom a lot because we're like kind of like we're not far away from each other, but we don't live together anymore. My yeah. Mom really like like likes to hover over me. She yeah. Me a lot, and I love her too. And um, yeah, it's kind of like you know like. As you grow older, like if you need me, I'll be around. It's kind of just—it it makes me feel. It's a comfort song for me. I feel like right for any for anything like relationships, friendships, uh, family. You know, it's just that's no part yeah. of me. Like you wrote it for something, and then it's gonna be mean twenty different things to someone else. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. The goal, right? yeah. I love that. And you're uh, you're kicking off this tour. Yeah. I know you got a on a I peeped a little bandaid on going a, on underneath that hat. What's, what's the story? Start. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh my god, that was so bad. Wait, where um, was the show at? It was at Holy Diver in Sacramento. Oh, in Sacramento. Okay, okay. Yeah. This is the first show. My first show, yeah, yesterday uh, on tour, and it couldn't have gone better, guys. It was the <laughs> best. It was the best time. I ran up on stage, didn't know there was this huge speaker next to the to the staircase. Uh -huh. Ran into it, and like, you know how people when they run into things or like they hurt themselves, they have to take a breather a minute. Right. I literally, I, I kid you not, like 0.5 seconds later, I was like, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> ran up to my. This guitar, is fine. Started singing. <laughs> And all of a sudden, there's just like the lights come up. There's this big bulge, Stop. egg sized bulge on my forehead, and it's bleeding. Ah. And like, I didn't know it was bleeding. And then, like, I'm like, I, the only the crowd was just like, I don't think exactly. you're good. <laughs> I, look, I was looking at the crowd, like, singing. I was, I was looking at this girl, I was like, oh, like, she's kind of cute. And then, like, <laughs> and then, like, she goes, and then she just stares at me, like, and she just made this weird, this really weird look. Like, like she was like, and I was like, what? Do I, is, is, do I look ugly or something? Like, right. Is there then, something like, on my face? And then all of a sudden, like, my manager <laughs> runs up to me, and she's like, you're bleeding. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Like, I'm chilling. Like, 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 why are you? Why are you? This is all in the middle of the show. Yeah. You're like, I'm singing. It's, it's <laughs> chaos. It's like everybody's like. <gasps> She's like, no, you're about I'm to like, pass out. What's going on right now? Like, I'm chilling right now. Like, so much adrenaline, and I'm like, holy shit. Like, yeah. I like, no, you're actually bleeding. I'm like, look. I'm like. Oh my god. Like, like, like seeping, like seeping through the cut, like going down my my face. <laughs> Like it was it was really bad, but like I want like I I knew that I was gonna play the show regardless, and like I was everybody was there. To see so you me. kept going. You got the dub kept going. Kept I, going. I even did a couple more songs at the end. Oh but my gosh! It was, a, it was a trip, but uh, you're a savage. Yeah, but it's, it's a story <laughs> to tell uh, when I'm like 50 years old, six years old, like telling my my grand my grandchildren. Yeah, when I was an artist once and like had a had a tour, oh. my first tour uh, <laughs> night, like I literally like got hit in the face with a speaker. But it was my own doing. I knew, I knew, yeah. I knew it was my fault, and like I couldn't do anything about it. It was there. You're like, why didn't anyone like, tell me yeah. that was there? Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I always the, the positive. The positive is that like I'm on tour, surrounded by really, really good people. Uh, people came, fans came to see me. Yeah, and, like traveling, you know, essentially, on, like for me, you know, it's great. So I looked at that and looked, you like, have a great story. You have a uh, transition now yeah. to swollen. Like, you're, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> you're set. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's part of your show. And then you have a show in the city tonight. I have a show in the city tonight. In your hometown. Morning. Yeah, my hometown. I'm really excited. So it's um, um, I don't know, like something about San Francisco. I used to really like. It's one of those things where I need to get, I need to get out of my town, like kind of just like figure it out. But then like, as I as I kind of like 
started to progress in LA, like I every time I went back to San Francisco, I'd be like, oh, I, I, I kind of miss this. And I like yeah. the coves here and there. Like, a little homesick. Yeah, I was in Knob Hill like last time I was here. And like it just felt really nice to be around like an area I was like essentially grew up in. Right. You feel more comfortable. Yeah. And like right. I like noticing all the like, little things I didn't notice before when I was a child and stuff or like a teenager, like going back to my, my high school in Pacifica. Like it's just like really weird for me to like look at everything in right. my life now i'm like oh wow this is so weird like i was about to be like a college student like studying law, pre-law and yeah now i'm here like you know grinding out <laughs> as an artist in la and like it's just it's it's a, it's a humbling experience and like it's 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 weird how life can take you on a different path and like so quick too yeah. it's like literally last like, year was american idol and now i'm on this tour yeah, yeah. Like, it's crazy it's, yeah it's great and i wouldn't trade it for the world i so love that crazy. no judgment random question yeah who has better tacos la or san francisco Ooh. Or the Bay Area. I will say LA has better tacos, <gasps> but San Francisco has better burritos. Really? Yes. Okay. I feel like San Francisco's a I'm a big burrito guy, mm -hmm. and I've had a bunch of burritos in LA, and none of them compare to San Francisco burritos. My favorite burrito spot is five minutes away from where I live. And I every time I go there on my, on my home, I go to that burrito, burrito spot. What is it called? Burrito. Um Daisy's Taqueria. Oh, I've never been there. It's this family-owned restaurant, and it's, like, super small, but, like, they make the best burritos, how I like them. Oh, and, like, now I'm Every hungry. single time I go to L.A., it's, like, it's kind of, like, mediocre, but the tacos there are, like, spectacular, and I, will, I don't really eat tacos here. L.A. does have good tacos. Yeah, I'm not going to yeah. hate. I go there. They, tacos their are tacos good. are good. Yeah. I'll never admit that they're better, but yeah. they're good. They're good. Yeah. Okay. I, still, you know, I, I, still, I still write my uh, the S, uh, SF. Burritos, I love, I love all, day. SF. burritos okay. all day. Burritos all day. I'm a burrito guy anyway, so it's, it's not going to matter if... Right. Like the tacos are better in SF or LA. You're like, period. I love those burritos. All right. Well, I'm super excited. Uh, is there anything you want to tell your Barry fans? Do we have like an album coming? What's what's in the future yeah, for you? We got, we got some more, um, not an album yet, but we got some more uh, records coming, more singles. Uh, hopefully, uh, another short body of work coming soon. I'm still working it out and like figuring out what I want in that in that body of work. I definitely, right. I'm definitely on a different phase now in my music, a uh, different era where I want more things to be more upbeat, uh, the writing to be different. And kind of more like abstractly like change like, the style a little bit yeah stuff and stuff yes yeah, change, changing up the style and i feel like I'm, I'm on the right path to just progressing into a new wave of sound uh you know like i don't want to stay stagnant and in, in sonically speaking um for the rest of my life so it's it's nice to uh have a little change and i'm happy i'm like willingly doing this because it's just it's fun i have more collaborators yeah uh, close collaborators with me writers and stuff who i trust it's it's a fun it's a fun experience and people love the new stuff that's out so it's great I'm like really happy about yes. it. When I play it live, it's just like this fun euphoric feeling. Like, damn, like I, re I really made that song. It's great. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, I want to keep doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're killing it. I can't wait Thank to you. see, you know, the future for you because I know you're just, you're going to keep going. I'm super excited. Thanks so much for hanging out. Thank you. Be safe at your show tonight. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I, will, I won't hit my head. Right. <laughs>